Because mm. I'm not a fucking uni man. You yeah. came to watch a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like you're not being. What well, she does? She's not claiming to be like a teacher. <laughs> like she's not claiming to be like a like master philosopher. Like she's literally just like twenty year old girl, just like have a good chat, guys. <laughs> But yeah, I remember a lot of us almost cried in one of them. I think it's Girdles and Complete Zero. Oh my gosh, yes, it was Girdles and Complete Zero. Yeah. Oh, I had so a video confusing. on Girdles and Complete Zero. I ended up writing an essay on Girdles and Complete Zero. Oh really? I got so many hate comments on that video. Really? A lot of hate comments are just asking for, or oh, you're explaining this incorrectly, you're missing all these details. I'm like, okay, then I told you in the video explicitly, I'm explaining this in a very simple way, because yeah. Girdles and Complete Zero, man. Like, like, you can't explain you, you it. You can't explain yeah, it in a video so format. Hard, yeah. And then I was just like, okay, you want some, like, philosophical logic thing? So I copy, paste it, Tim Button's whole logical proof. And they're like, oh, this is incorrect, this is wrong, and all that. I'm like, dude, this is from a professor from Cambridge. I'm not, yeah, I'm I'm not exactly sure. sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's right. Yeah, like, uh, he knows more probably yeah. than you. <laughs> like, yeah. this is his entire career. I don't think they... People, people they know stuff. It's the thing that we talk about, how like people who think that they're really smart and think that yeah. they have, you know have you know know everything and that there's nothing new to learn. No, but that actually gave me such a light bulb moment because I was thinking, okay, if you are actually smart, you are actually educated in philosophy or arithmetic, and let's say you're university professor level, can you think of any university professor who will use their spare time to? post hate comments yeah, on exactly. the internet you can't think of anyone no. who's professional and successful and like minding their own business yeah do you even want to waste their time on a youtuber no, and be probably, like oh you're wrong they're probably stressed over getting funding yeah especially if you're like a philosophy professor do you think do you think it would be better if you didn't read them or do you like reading them because it helps you improve no it definitely helps not reading them I yeah just, i just like you stop reading yeah, comments i don't reading comments. i rarely read comments now yeah i don't <laughs> i it's, think it's bad i think it just upsets you mm -hmm. and it doesn't really help because you're well they're just <laughs> they're not functioning on reason yeah or like they don't probably they don't even know what they're talking about they just they want to express that they're angry yeah. or they just want to have something to say. Or maybe they're just being controversial for the sake of being controversial, you know? There's no yeah. way, there's not a single person in the world that can make everyone like them. Mm. No way. Yeah. I think when I, after I got bullied in high school, mm -hmm. I tried to make everyone like me. Mm -hmm. And it was so exhausting because... I remember there was a phase where, like, whenever I had a conversation with someone and they'd be like, oh, have you watched da-da-da or have you read blah-blah-blah? Mm. And I'd always say yes because I just wanted to continue the conversation even though I haven't. Mm. And then I would end up, like, lying to them and be like, oh, yeah, I really liked this, like, episode. And then they'd mm. realize I was lying and then, like, they'd call me out on being fake and stuff mm. like that. People who are fake just, like, want to be liked or they mm. want to... They feel the need to... <sighs> I guess it's just, like getting validation from from external sources right it's you abandon who you are to mm -hmm. suit the person that you're being fake towards mm -hmm. i think it's ever possible to be real with other people yeah for sure i think it takes time though i think everybody has a wall initially mm -hmm. some people's are thicker some are thinner but i think i think it's like a it's a good thing though to yeah. kind of take it slow because I think if yeah. you open up immediately to someone you never know oh, <laughs> who like you're her. opening up to you know yeah like some people are shit and you don't want to open <laughs> up to them yeah there was a guy in high school who had a crush on and I told him you know stuff he told everyone it's always a guy that you're having a crush on it's I always know, a guy I, know. I also told him that I was scared of like the school bully and then he told the bully. Oh. He came up to me and then she was like, Why are you scared of me? I thought we were friends. And then she was like, That's terrifying. I know. And then, like, oh my gosh, yeah, I hate her. I'm actually glad that I went through it because mm. I don't know. First of all, I think it really matured me. And second of all, I think. Yeah, it's given me like the resources to be empathetic mm. to people who might be going through something similar. I didn't realize I was bullying. I didn't realize that had an impact on me until I started therapy. Yeah. Because obviously I'm the biggest student in the entire year. I'm taller yeah. than most of the guys. They could bully me, but they can't really... I, I don't think I was afraid of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I was 
very annoyed at them yeah. and very affected by them. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't afraid because mm -hmm. honestly, I could punch them like I could fight. Them. <laughs> yeah, like, they, yeah, they can't yeah. do anything with me. They can't yeah. physically push me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a very strong personality as well, so like they know I will start of I'll pick a fight yeah. if they go directly okay. at me. So they do things behind my back, or it's just small talks. It's very yeah. much microaggression. Yeah. Even if you're not feeling afraid, it could still affect you. That's what I find interesting. Really, in yeah. what way? If you don't mind me asking. And some of the teachers throw my textbook at me oh in front of everyone, and they also like call me out in front of everyone all the time and we had like 40 50 students in the, in the classroom and i distinctly remember i was in second grade mm -hmm. and my science teacher literally said to everyone oh she will end up in a gang somewhere she will not have a good future she oh can't gosh. do anything she's gonna do drugs she's gonna like become this horrible like homeless girl that is not okay yeah i was in an art class and I was a brat, I must admit. I was an annoying kid. Yeah. And I didn't... I was always very straightforward. I couldn't hold my tongue. Mm. In art class, and I saw a drawing on a wall of someone else's painting. And I just said, oh, this is really ugly. Mm. Without a thought. And then my teacher, of course, snapped at me. And But you were in elementary school? Yeah, I was in primary school. How old were you, though? <sighs> I think under 10. I feel like I was under 10. Anyway, continue. Oh, I was really, it ended up worse because basically at the end of the class, yeah. someone found that drawing in the trash bin, but I did not throw it in. Yeah. We don't, till this day, I don't know who threw it in. Yeah. But my teacher turned to me and said, how could you do this? You shouldn't throw someone's drawing in the bin just because you found it ugly. I said, I, I didn't do it. Yeah. It's like, stop lying. You threw it. Oh my gosh. Like, no, I, I didn't throw it. I would not do that to someone else's painting. Yeah. And then she, she's just like, it's so disappointing that you are this horrible kid that you even lie about this. Just own up to your own mistake. I'm like, dude, you're not... I didn't, you're not listening. You're not listening. I'm not the person who will do that. I... Yes, it's horrible, the fact that I explicitly said this painting is ugly yeah. in front of everyone. But then there's a th big difference between what I did and someone who will do it behind everyone's back and destroy that painting in its existence. Yeah, yeah. Huge difference. Yeah, huge difference. <laughs> and also, I mean, like, I know it's unforgivable. I mean, mm. I guess it's, like, inexcusable. But at the same time, I feel like children say... Ch Children say stuff like that all the time and you can't yeah. take it seriously. Like, I'm not going to lie. I mean, you can choose to take it seriously because children are honest. I don't know. I feel like that's one of the best things that I like about children is that like, yeah. they're so honest. Like, I remember going to an art museum in like mm -hmm. Spain with mm -hmm. my family and there was a kid who... It was a Picasso exhibition. He was basically saying like, Oh my gosh, Picasso was such a bad artist. And I'm I like, love this kid. kids don't lie. Like, they just mm. say what they think. Mm. Like, obviously, they can lie. Some children are, like, amazing manipulators. But at the same yeah. time, like, this is one of the things that I like most about children is just, like, sometimes they just mm -hmm. say what they think, like, immediately. And you can't really blame yeah. them for it. For your teachers to, like, snap at you like that, I think she's being too uptight. Like, I feel like if you're a primary school teacher, you just have mm -hmm. to deal with the fact that sometimes children, like, say things like that. And, like, instead mm -hmm. of snapping at them, just be like, oh... Like, it's not very nice to, like, say someone's painting is ugly. Like, mm. make sure, you know, even if you think that, don't say it. Mm. Or, um, you know, just keep it to yourself. Because, like, mm. you know, art is subjective, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I still have this dream now. It's not just when I was a kid. But when mm. I was also younger, I had this dream a lot about becoming famous and just, like, calling people out that used to bully me. Mm. I used to have dreams, like, oh. I'd, I'd win, like, an Oscar or something. Yeah. I'd win, like, a Grammy. Yeah. And I'd be like... I have to thank blah 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 for bullying really? me in high school because yes. you know thanks to her I like I <laughs> like I used to have this dream like so much yeah it's kind of funny but like yeah it could, I, I guess I didn't realize that like it could be harmful when it becomes okay. like a revenge plot because I think it 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 traps you right yeah it does yeah they don't deserve that they don't deserve they your don't attention, deserve attention. Yeah. they don't deserve you even calling yeah. them out because they're just mm -mm. yeah but also what i find really difficult is because 
I think the bullied students for us, it's really hard to get closure. Yeah. To them, they don't, they don't care. To them, they, it doesn't matter. But to yeah. us, you don't get closure because you want them to acknowledge your pain. Yeah, yeah. But it's not gonna happen. Rarely happens. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it's so rare, man. Like, but if you take it to the nth degree, then some bullied people might grow up to murder the bully. Yeah. That happens sometimes. Yeah, that does happen. I think a lot of it is knowing that you didn't do anything wrong. I guess it's also acknowledging that they they didn't know what they were doing, I think. I guess it depends on- they don't? I think it's better to think of it that way. Like, I think- mm. The thing is, they know what they're doing, but they don't really because they're not on the receiving side of it. So oh, I guess like- They don't know the full picture of it. They don't really know the full picture or I don't know. I feel like people who bully are damaged themselves in some mm. sort of way. Mm. Like oftentimes maybe pe people who bully were themselves bullied before and maybe they're damaged and they don't know how to deal with it. And so the only way that they know how to is to make other people feel bad to stop that cycle or whatever. I think you just have to acknowledge that. You know, it's not your fault that you're being bullied, like nothing. Mm. It's nothing that you did. It's just mm. that, you know, they have their own problems and it's really unfortunate that... I mean, unfortunate is... Uh, to, to put it, you know, to put very it... Very lightly. You, to, very lightly, to put, for lack of a better word, right? Mm. It's unfortunate that they let it out on you, but... Like, just knowing that it has nothing to do with you and your experience of being bullied does not define you. Mm. Like, obviously grow from it, learn from it, but, you know, it is not who you are. Like, you can decide who you want to be by yourself. Like, you don't need to mm. hold on to that part of yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that was partly how I got closure. I also got closure from, you know, my mom's famous saying of like, you know, mm. you know, whether, whether you choose to live your life happily mm. or you know, sad, it's gonna go on. Mm -hmm. So why don't you choose to live it happily. happily? Another thing I find very dangerous after being bullied is, yes, it's really important to acknowledge that you are harmed mm. and you're hurt, but it's also very easy to slip into a victim mindset. Mm. Put everything under a microscope. Yeah. And really enlarging everything yeah i think once you're stuck in it it's similar to getting stuck in an echo chamber i guess mm, yeah or it's like a cycle of like self-pity right I yeah self-pity i think that is so dangerous because mm. it's not productive like for you or for the people around you even mm. for the bullies like i guess it's like a like a tragic hero com complex you yeah know? yeah i mean i know people who enjoy being sad like they really oh, yeah. enjoy being like unfortunate i see a lot of people taking pride in their pain yeah yeah they like they revel in it and mm. they tell people about it like it's a badge of honor but i'm like you mm. need help you probably need therapy i don't know it's it's painful to see when when there are people like that because mm. it, it's it's so sad when i was really young mm. i used to be someone like that probably mm. in middle school yeah and it's very later on in life, I mean, I'm only 21, but very later on that I realized that was a cry for help. Yeah. But in that moment, you don't feel like it's a cry for help. No, yeah. You feel like it's a badge of honor. You feel like, okay, I'm getting attention because I'm different. Because yeah. I have this experience and other people don't have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But then you're so disappointed by other people's reaction when you tell them because they just look at you like, yeah it's like yeah like with the hate comments and stuff like why do you feel the need to be horrible like do you know sometimes i get so confused when i watch youtube and i see like people actually dislike videos mm. like i'm like you went out of your way to click to this like button, like button like yeah what is the point mm. i don't know just don't watch just don't click the like button yeah unless it's something like really bad like mm racism <laughs> or like yeah. somebody being like really sexist in the video or something but like mm -hmm. there are literally videos of like people showing their homes like like diy <laughs> videos and like people dislike those videos i'm like what, she, what are they doing that is so bad like they're literally like just redoing their closet or something like mm. thanks for listening <laughs> is that it um 
please like and subscribe. How how does it work for Billy Billy? Huan Ying. The channel. My Mandarin is so bad. I really want to improve my Mandarin. Mandarin is such a helpful language.